Hi, in this video I'm going to go through uh, the poll section of the week 4B for fall 2023 um, poll. I already made a video going through the um, first section where you were classifying different types of extractions. So just go check that out. Those were kind of like an in-class activity. Now I did, I kind of forgot that, uh, I did drop off right here. Um, so I was gonna quickly go through that. Um, what this line of code is going to do is that it will extract from Iris the sepal length column. It will compare it to the number five and just return true or false is it less than number five. This will return the sepal length that is less than or equal to 2.5. It will use the ampersand to join those probabilities. And if I was typing this out, return where uh, return the rows. So notice for the extraction, it's the entire row section. There's the comma right there, all columns. So this will return all rows where sepal length is less than five and sepal width is also less than or equal to 2.5. The next one does a similar process except it subsets it to pedal width. So I would use similar syntax when translating it to English. I would say uh, this function will return the pedal width values where the sepal length was less than five and the sepal width was less than or equal to 2.5. Fairly straightforward once you get used to trying to translate this into English. And it's really why like my goal is to get y'all to talk this out. I think I'll keep doing some more examples where you have to talk it out. That seems to be pretty beneficial. The next thing was going to create a logical object, which I then use to do the exact same thing. So whatever you typed here, you could type here. You would just maybe say first assigning it to an object called Q logic and then assigning those rows um, across the pedal width column. So in fact, I probably would just still have said uh, this returns the pedal width values across um, rows of the object where this was true and this was true. This is the exact same thing. So there, there is no difference. So basically I've said the same thing three times. Four times? Uh, three times and then once I return to all rows in summary. Uh, this is just a really common tool that I try to encourage you guys to use. Uh, the, the sum is that missing values make everything harder. Now moving into next week, we have data with a lot of missing values. Um, and because of that, like you're gonna have to get used to it. So this is just me more trying to give you a little bit of a heads up. Uh, it is the which function. The which function returns the positions where uh, logic what returned true. Um, that means that it just doesn't say anything about the false values and it also doesn't say anything about missing values. It's a very, very easy way to get rid of NA. NA.omit, which I totally get why everyone wants to use it, instead deletes those values, shifting everything over. So if I have a long logical uh, vector and I delete like some value, especially a value up near the front, that means everything's been frame shifted out of sync with the rest of the object. And so you end up just extracting nonsense. It's just random values. Very, very dangerous. Makes really hard to detect errors. Just, I don't ever recommend using na.omit because um, it's a lot, it, there's other easier to understand ways of removing missing information. Um, most of your summary statistics, for instance, just have an argument that removes missing data. That's usually what I recommend using. Okay, um, so the next one says, what will the following return? This will be one, two, three, four, five. And so that's gonna be compared to two. Um, recycling will occur to make this right side be the same length. So this will be two repeated five times, and then it will occur element wise. So one will be compared to two, false. 2 will be compared to 2, true. 3 will be compared to 2, false. And we can already see that this is the right answer. This will return the, the negation of that, so where that was not true. And so this will be true, false, true, true, true. 
Uh, the next one is going to do an extraction first. And the way I know it's first is, well, this is the first character I encounter, which links over here. So that means that everything in here has to be completed first. Okay, linking this to here, this connects over to here. That's a closed parenthesis that's going to occur. So one through five will be created. Then this happens and now we can complete that square bracket, meaning that now those values one through five will be extracted from the second value. That will return the value two and then not equal to two is indeed false. In this case, we have one through five. So one, two, three, four, five. One and two are the only ones less than three. So true, true, false, 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 false. This one would have been if it was less than or equal to. Again, this one's more of an order of operations. This parentheses connects to the other side, which means one through five gets created. So that data is then going to be what is sent to this square bracket. Now, before the square bracket can work, it has to solve its contents because how else is it going to know what to extract? So the first content is this parenthesis, which links to this parenthesis, creating again an object of one through five which is then compared to the value three. So this all together becomes true, true, false, 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 false. Therefore, the one and the two are the corresponding positions where it was true and true, one, two. Here, it's very similar, except this will become false, 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 true, true. So false, 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 true, true, because five, four, three, two, one. That would mean that the last two positions are the ones that get extracted. And so this will return four and five. This is a very similar thing, but it's using a manually constructed logical vector. This was a, also a manually constructed logical vector, but this was directly using C. As far as R is concerned though, there's no difference to this. This is easier to read for me. This is, you know, right now it's easy, but if that's much longer than five, it becomes very hard to read. And it also becomes hard to change and prone to errors. I prefer numbers when I can. Um, in this situation though, the third and the fifth positions are true. So the third and fifth positions in this object are three and five. The descriptors describe the data returned by the following code. Um, so this is iris, a data frame with all rows being extracted. Um, across the columns three through five. So this is not true. Um, the value, the first, the second, and the fourth value are being omitted from row one. Same for all of the rows. Because the columns are being subset, the values across a row are consequently being removed. Now the row itself is still there. I haven't touched the like order or the total number of rows, but the contents of those rows have changed. Because it's, it's two dimensions. It's, it's not one or the other. It's the same at the same time. If I remove some values from one dimension, that does affect the other one. Just haven't reduced the number of rows. Um, so here, the all the values in column three are returned. All the values in column five are returned. Um, because two columns are returned, it will be a data frame object that gets returned, not a vector. Um, data frames are list objects. Each container is a separate element in that list and they can have different properties. And so it would be dangerous to try and coerce um, a multi-column output. So it doesn't, it just, it just returns a data frame. It's um, not true if you narrow it down to a single column. If it's a single column, most many functions in R will simplify that to a vector. Uh, given the following object, what is which of the following would extract rows that have numvec values between 10 and 20, not inclusive as a data frame? So between 10 and 20. So if, ignore the bottom. This is people just get stuck on trying to read my code. Ignore the bottom. 
tell me in English what this would mean. You've practiced math enough at the point that you get to my class. You should be able to do this. So it's the values between 10 and 20. That means it should be greater than 10 and less than 20. So at the same time, those should be true. So literally, and, um, it should be greater than 10 and less than 20. I did not have to look at the code. I just said it out loud using English and some of like the training that's been built into me from thinking like data about this, eh, thinking about data in this way. But uh, talking it out really helps students with this. This next one is the values not in the range 10 or 20. That one might be a little bit easier for you just to, to, to draw out. But if you think about a number line, I want the values that are either like less than 10 or greater than 20. I don't want the ones inside of that range. So it's going to be or le so, um, less than 10 or greater than 20, which means I'm gonna use my or symbol. Um, it's going to be less than 10 or greater than 20. <laughs> uh, this one actually is a fairly common thing. I mean, I've, I've made it plenty of times just when I was experimenting with code and I was like, oh gosh, it's, it's easy to read these and talk them out. It's a much different story when you're trying to write it. And so you're just like, all right, let me pause. I, I, I really, I do. I just kind of like, all right, let me look away from the code real quick. If I want to get all of the values by comparing them to 10 and 20, well, first of all, if I just say greater than 10 or less than 10 in, or equal to 10, that is literally all numbers. So I've defined all real numbers with those considerations. But that's also true here. If I say greater than 10, so if I go infinitely in the positive direction or less than 20, and then I go infinitely in the negative direction and they overlap, nothing gets left out. You can't see that. Nothing got left out. So that's this. So it's an or because if it was and, then I would have just selected the stuff where they overlapped. So it would just been right there. But I think I just did a bad gesture, I'm sorry. Um, but instead, uh, if, I, if I overlap them inclusive with an or, then it's literally every single value. And that's it. All right, cool. I hope that helped. Thank you.